The past week down in Miami, Florida, we just had the FWC commission meeting. So today what we're going to be discussing is my personal opinion after listening to both of those days of meetings. So stick around. My name is Nick Pulaski. Growing up, I have always had a passion for wildlife. And with that passion, along with my passion of filmmaking, I get taken on some amazing adventures creating wildlife content, getting up close with a variety of incredible animals. So come follow along as I pursue my goals of educating, inspiring, exploring, and conserving wildlife, all while having fun, seeing the beauty in our natural world. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Thank you so much for joining me here today. So I had a video put out a couple weeks ago going over what happened on the Holy Massacre down in Florida for Chris Coffee and all the animals down there. If you didn't see what was going on and you don't know really exactly what's going on down in Florida right now, that is probably the best way to start along with everyone else on the USR page as well as other people as well too have been posting about what basically is going down over there and why Florida needs our help more than ever really at this stage. And I mean, they have in the past as well too. I mean, I'm not that's undermining what they've been needing down there but I mean this is a pretty big deal that has also hit national news as well too so it's great for publicity purposes and getting the word out and really showing that there's change that needs to happen down in Florida to work together between FWC government and also the public down there as well too so there needs to be common ground met between the two I truly hope that that was the case that truly broke the camel's back unfortunately there was bloodshed between animals being lost throughout that process and it was a truly horrific unfortunate thing. I truly hope going forward that there is no more life being lost unnecessarily in this matter. So it's just something that we really need to find common ground between the public and FWC. I personally don't live in Florida so why does it really matter to me? A lot of people probably don't live in Florida that are going to be watching this video but wherever you are in the states this is something that is very important and even if you're out of the states too I mean this is something that you can still get involved however you can. There are ways for you guys to get involved too. But whether you are in Florida or if you're in another state, this still matters to you as well too. Florida is basically ground zero for a lot of things in our industry. So there are a lot of keepers out there that need our help, whether it be in reptiles, fish, mammals, any sort of exotics out there, they need our help more than ever with this issue. And we really need to come together to work as a team to help each other out and support each other, truly find the change we are looking for. And that was the big thing going forward that we needed to prep and post these videos to raise awareness and get people's voices heard at these upcoming meetings for FWC commissions meetings that were happening this past week in Miami on May 10th and 11th. So I was not one that made it down to Florida to go to these meetings in person, but I did watch the live streams from start to finish on all the matters that they went over. The topics that they go over during these meetings and they kind of list out a time frame of when they're going to be talking about what and how long they're going to be discussing what in these topics. That's kind of how these meetings go. So there were issues amongst these topics that they wanted to bring up in regards to the reptiles as well as public speech speaking areas where people could speak about certain air matters that, that maybe necessarily weren't even going to be listed on the meeting agenda itself. So regardless, I just kind of listened to kind of hear what issues were going on in terms of the matters that both affected like the reptile community and the animal community, as long with anything else that was going on in Florida too. The reason is I kind of want to see how these matters play out for other communities as well too. And I thought that was important to do mainly because I wanted to see how the commission also works with other different important topics that other people are worried about and pressed on as well too and how they react to those communities as well. I think that's very important to kind of see how those communities interact with FWC as well as how we interact with FWC as well too. I think it's just something that's very important to kind of see and compare. So I'm going to go more in depth about my opinion after hearing both days of these meetings but my outcome overall thought from these meetings is kind of what US Arc Florida said, and that is cautiously optimistic. And I'm gonna explain a little bit more about what I mean about that after we get into the topics of hand from both of these meetings. So let's start with May 10th. So May 10th was not necessarily the big day for the reptile keepers. They did talk about Operation Viper down in Florida, which was basically the big reptile topic down there. Between Operation Viper and the other big topic being the snaring and the trapping going on in Florida, that was the big crucial things there. And to start, there was no public comment being given to people for Operation Viper, but there was public comment being given to people in terms of the trapping. As public speaking came up for people, basically everyone had three minutes to discuss their piece, and a lot of people came up and they were very passionate, whether they were for trapping or against trapping in Florida. That was a big crucial thing, but then Daniel Parker of US Arc Florida came up, and he kind of basically just called out Barreto and was talking about how the terrapins are constantly getting caught in crab traps. He also called out how there was not a single 
single mention at the beginning of the meeting going over the agendas about the Holy Thursday Massacre. So he did call out Barreto and the commissions about that. It got a little bit heated after that. So I mean, I commend Daniel for doing those kind of things. It's something that's very important. We have to make sure that their back is continuous against the wall and pressed on these topics because it is very important and it is something that nationally people want to know about and people really care deeply about what's going on with this situation. So it was something very important. I too was wondering why didn't they bring this up on the first day as well too, just kind of going over these topics, but he called them out and what Barreto said to Daniel was is that there is more that we don't know about that he is going to unveil tomorrow and he was basically saying you're going to get all the facts tomorrow and he basically kept it very vague like that. And afterwards, I mean, that's kind of how the, in terms of the reptile side of things, kind of everything was left. And that's kind of how I viewed it, at least, is everything was left with that kind of eerie message right there. And what the heck does he mean from that? And I even caught the live stream that US Art Florida put up right after the first day of the meetings. Personally, myself, as well as how other people felt on this live stream, is it just was kind of a weird message and it was a weird energy and vibe going into the second meeting and the night before, kind of like this could go either really bad or really good. You know, I mean, we don't know what's going to start off in this meeting. It was a little bit stressful to hear those kind of things and a little bit nerve wracking as well too, because, you know, I mean, like I said, we all just kind of want to work together with FWC and really kind of find some common ground here. People don't want to deal with the lies, the drama, and deceiving anything that was going on with FWC in the past. Really what it comes down to is FWC currently has a negative track record with the public of the industry. So it's really just trying to figure out how this meeting was going to go the second day on the major points that we were going to get into. So discussing in terms of the whitelist options that they were going to propose, how that was going to go, if they were going to push through one of the options that was on the table and how that was going to go along with how the discussion later on with the public speaking matter and how people were going to handle and discuss about the Holy Thursday Massacre. And what Beretta was necessarily meaning when he was going to say that he was going to bring more information tomorrow regarding Holy Thursday Massacre. It was all up in the air at this point. It was very stressful. We were all worrying like, oh boy, this is going to be basically just another back and forth battle, hopefully not with the um, commissioners. But the big thing I wanted to commend people on was the turnout in person was huge. I mean, they said right at the beginning that there was 54 speakers alone about the whitelist options and the proposal of that. You know, I mean, a lot of people were stepping up and showing major players in the industry as well, too. No matter, not just reptiles, but all throughout the industry. It was a huge, huge thing to see. And it was very uplifting. Everyone being in that room, everyone helping each other, lifting each other's spirits up. People were clapping for one another in those meetings people were very respectful in those meetings as well too very professional so there was really no inappropriateness whatsoever going on in these meetings everyone was very respectful and really trying to find that common ground was the huge theme of these messages that people were giving out and giving their hearts and souls and talking about how passionate they are and how they just want to work with FWC that was a very important thing so right at the beginning they were talking about the proposal of these white lists and then after they talked about the proposal of these white lists Chairman Barreto was discussing how they are not going to force through these proposed whitelist options immediately. Instead, what he was going to do is give the executive director, Colonel Young, a opportunity to kind of work through these issues and see what we could do in terms of finding, hopefully, ideally, really, finding that middle ground between industry and FWC. So really, at the end of the day, they're just trying to see with Colonel Young, as far as FWC goes, what he can bring to the table. And what we're trying to see on our side is also what he can bring to the table but it's like a fresh slate with this guy a clean relationship and we're just trying to build a positive relationship with this guy and truly show him one and people were inviting him when they came up people were inviting him to come to their facilities they wanted to discuss these things they wanted to work through these problems because the whitelist options are just something that they cannot be dictated and they just cannot be enforced really and they were just options that are just something that are completely impractical at the end of the day and just not worth putting through and it would just cause a lot more issues than it would do good so 
the industry wants to work with FWC and they are begging and pleading and their cases were being made. Please have FWC work with industry rather than against each other and batting heads. They want to find common ground. So that was the big message there, which was wonderful. A lot of people were very thankful. They were thanking Barreto to making this decision and not forcing through these damaging whitelist options. That was a huge thing. So a lot of people were kind of flipping what they were about to say at the podium and that was really huge. Even though they only had two minutes to say what they had to say at the podium rather than three the following day, it was a very important thing to get your messages across and they were truly enforcing that two minutes so it wasn't taken lightly. All 54 of those people were extremely passionate and that was awesome to see. Kudos to everyone. I know people were saying that they are not public speakers. I know I get it. It can be very hard but you all did phenomenal at the end of the day. I want to commend you all so thank you so much for being in person and standing up for the industry. And then later on in the meeting people also had the ability to take public comment on things that were not on the agenda. This is where people were able to speak on the Holy Thursday Massacre and anything else that they wanted to speak upon. During this time, there was a lot of speakers that were also involved in this as well too, so awesome there as well too. The room was packed and it was definitely something really cool to see in the live stream and I saw some familiar faces on there as well too and some familiar faces that took to the stand as well too. It was just really awesome to see and like I said, everyone was cordial and respectful. It was a real professional atmosphere at the end of the day, which was awesome and that's how it always should be. If you're just up there cussing and swearing and stuff like that, no one's going to take you seriously. You know, it's not going to get your point across. You're just going to sound like a fool at the end of the day. So if you just keep your matters respectful and you keep your head level, that is how you get business done. But like I said, public comment was open and people were discussing again at the podium their emotions and really not holding back in terms of that and really letting people know that this was not okay and this was not acceptable and kind of going back to the proposed whitelist issues and anything else into the agenda as well too. That really mixed into the animal keepers of Florida and how this affects their daily lives indirectly or directly whether they have economic gain or anything like that or just in the love of their animals it was very important to hear these things I mean these are people's livelihoods this is why they wake up this is what they love to do and these are people that care about these animals whether they do it for economic gain or not I mean this is just a huge part of everyone's lives and it's not something taken lightly at all I mean these animals are not just animals these are our pets these are our animals that we care about we love I mean we have emotional connections with these animals as well too I love well to death here this is why we want to start those early conversations and really mending that relationship with FWC and hopefully this is a fresh slate like I said with Colonel Young to really get that job started so there was a few people that came up that were speaking on behalf of people that could not be there today and it was actually pretty cool and something very touching and it was actually some parents that were taking the stands in behalf of their kids that couldn't be there because they were in school and these kids were about like 16 to about 20 years old I believe they were just speaking about how their kids had been passionate for the animals that they care for and I believe both of them were reptile keepers as well and they are reptile breeders and how they started this business growing up and it is something that they are passionate about and it's what they want to do full-time growing up and they are extremely scared for their kids well-being and if they don't want them to have to move out of Florida or completely lose their business and become criminals, that's not what they want for their kids. They're these animals as well, too. They know that their kids are striving for their business, and this is what they're truly passionate about. And they're the next generation, right? I mean, this is very important in terms of inspiring people to love wildlife, love reptiles, love animals in general. That is what is important. That's what's important is carrying on that passion, that fire, that sparking that passion in other people. And this is what they're going to take away if they keep harboring down these rules on people and hammering these rules into people that are going to instill the opposite and making people not appreciate wildlife as it needs to be appreciated. Now why that really stuck out to me is it's really kind of like a crux at the end of the day. It's really something that's difficult because really if it wasn't for everything that's going on these past few years with FWC and all the issues going up to this point. They have a bad track record, like I said, with industry. And if it wasn't for all these issues, I mean, I probably would have been down in Florida years ago, you know? I mean, it's something so struggling, like, to see that all these keepers go through down there. And that's why I speak passionately on these topics, too, and I watch this carefully, is it's so hard to see these issues go down because, man, if it were up to me, I mean, Florida's, like, a great place for all these different things. It's great for the wildlife aspect of things things. It's great for raising these animals in as well too in captive environments. It's really just a struggle to see that other people who are raised down there and have no choice in some cases to be down there are livelihoods are essentially threatened. 
and I, I just don't know what I would do in those cases, you know? I mean, it's what can you do in those cases when authority is knocking on your door and making you a criminal when you have done absolutely everything to make sure that you are doing everything in your power to make sure that these animals are well taken care of, secure, and all that you can do. It's just a tough battle, you know? I really hope that this is definitely an eye-opener and it's not just something that they're just saying just to say and play face. I really hope that there is going to be some positive change coming from all of this. And I truly, I truly, like I said, cautiously optimistic, but I truly think if they listen to all 54 plus people that came up on day two and throughout the whole meetings, really, and just kind of saw what's going on in the backlash from everything that they did and all their wrongdoing, that's where I kind of see more positiveness coming from this is they know that they screwed up. They owned up to it. And it seemed like they were pretty genuine about that as well, too, though it doesn't make it right. It's definitely something that I think is in the positive direction versus where we were two weeks ago, even. You know, I mean, I think we were pretty much at each other's heads trying to battle these things out. And I think this was definitely a great start face to face. And that's the other thing is these meetings are very important to these reasons. It's not just this meeting and that's it. You know, I mean, anyone that's a keeper in Florida and everything like that, keep up with it. You know, I mean, this got the snowball rolling and we only want that to keep growing and growing and growing and we build down that relationship so keep doing these meetings keep reaching out anything and everything I mean it's just about having that communication there that's what's key and important keep updated on US Arc Florida and US Arc as well too they're going to keep throwing updates as well out there as well too so definitely check them out as well too I will leave links down below to their stuff as well too so support them as well too we're large in numbers and we got to make our voices heard and we have to do that like we did in these meetings in a respectful manner so that's basically what I wanted to discuss today I think it was very important stuff and I think it's stuff that I wanted people who couldn't see those meetings I think those are the highlights that I wanted to go over after those meetings have happened but yeah like I said those of the highlights that I wanted to kind of discuss and go over after watching those two days worth of meetings. But also too, I want to hear your thoughts after these meetings as well too. Those are my personal opinions after these meetings. I think cautiously optimistic is a great way to phrase it right now. Hopefully we're going in a positive direction. That's all I can say in terms of industry as a whole with FWC. So thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Like I said, definitely check out USARC and USARC Florida down below as well as my social medias down there as well too. Make sure to like and subscribe to this video. I would greatly appreciate it as well as hit that notification bell so you know when I upload. Thank you guys so much again for watching. Truly means the world to me. Great job to everyone that showed up to those meetings as well too. I commend you guys. Keep up your efforts. It's awesome to see everyone coming together and hopefully fingers crossed everything keeps going in a positive direction for you guys. Hoping for you guys. But thank you guys so much again for watching and until next time we will see you guys soon. Take care.